You know, I love playing the Switch in handheld mode as much as the next gamer, but I gotta admit, sometimes it really wears on the wrist. Well, luckily, do I have the accessory for you. Is that my own disembodied voice? Are we... are we in the middle of a sponsorship? Indeed! Today's episode is brought to you by Satisfy and their excellent line of Zen Grips. Just pop your switch right in and boom, absolute comfort level achieved. You throw in these little analog grips for even more comfort and ooh. Ooh, that feels nice. If you notice, the right handle on the Zen Grip is even slightly adjusted to make it easier to hit the analog stick. Great touch. I genuinely love playing my Switch this way, and what is really nice is that it was designed to not only be really snug, but also safe. You got no worries about scratching up your Switch or your Joy-Con's plastic here thanks to these little extra nubs. Totally secure. And if you get one of their bundles, you also get a super sturdy case to put your Switch in that has some extra spots to put in some Switch cartridges, and even a space for a power bank so you can always have extra battery life wherever you go. This bundle comes in multiple varieties, and if you're a Switch Lite user, no worries there either, you're covered there as well. This worked out really well. A great Switch accessory to go along with a Switch video. Big thank you to Satisfy for sponsoring today's episode, and if you want to get a grip or a case for yourself, use the link down below and use the code ANTU10 on checkout to get 10% off your order. Now with that out of the way, it's time to get to the video. We're gonna go down a very, very dark rabbit hole. The Nintendo Switch is a pretty damn good console. I know, somebody finally had to say it. You got great first party games, arguably the most quality third party games of any Nintendo console out there, and indie games up the wazoo. Holy cow, Switch is absolutely my indie game machine. It is perfect for those. Take one trip to the eShop and it's not really that hard to feel overwhelmed. Super simplistic in design for sure, but oh, so many quality games. Just a few button presses and a payment confirmation screen away. All it's missing is some cool music. The Wii U did something better than the Switch. Switch, I'm just saying. Recent releases, coming soon, featured, all quality ways to spend your time. Great deals though, that's where things get a bit spicy. I love checking out the eShop on basically a weekly basis to see what they have on hand, and to check out the great deal section, you gotta admit, sometimes you can find some really good stuff for really cheap prices. I got Resident Evil 4 here, a portable version of a fantastic game for only 15 bucks. That's crazy. I needed a fifth copy of this game. Massive sales have been a thing for quite a while now, especially for PC gamers. I mean, oh my goodness, you people on Steam, you've had it good for a while now. But as a Nintendo fan, I am loving so much of what is getting these price cuts every few weeks. But some of you know where I'm going with this. Bouncy Bob. Two words that strike fear in the heart of Switch fans everywhere. Sort of comes off as a mobile title that was shoddily ported over to the Switch, but the reason it has any form of notoriety in the first place is because it is regularly on sale for a whopping 10 stinking cents. Bad games sold for really cheap. That's practically a tagline for the great deal section of the eShop. There's so much good you can find on this service, but I gotta tell you, my morbid curiosity finally got the better of me. I just had to see the other side. The games featured in this video are going to be solely digital, as well as for the most part, Switch exclusive. So only bandwidth space and a couple of Joy-Cons are strong enough to handle these bad boys. I know a lot of you guys want to see me talk about Garfield Kart Furious Racing, but it got a physical release, so it's disqualified. One day, but not today. A big thank you to everyone who offered suggestions on my Twitter a while back. Because of all of you, as well as some of my own research, I spent a whopping 100 plus dollars on some absolute f filth. Due to the nature of some of these random sales, it is kind of hard to put an exact price on everything at the time you're watching this, but trust me, I dropped $150 on eShop credit and more than two thirds of that went to the titles in this video. I wouldn't lie to you here. This is too important of a topic to discuss. And then I bought Kirby Fighters 2 with some of the money that was left over, now that's a good game. Listen, the Switch eShop has more great games on hand than any previous Nintendo digital store before it, but quality control was never really that company's strong suit. Here we have Jigsaw Masterpieces, which is probably a fine game, for only 9 cents right next to Resident Evil 4. 
Incredible. I know making a video game is hard, so my goal here isn't to crap on anybody's hopes and dreams, but once these products start asking for money to access them, they are ripe for criticism as far as I'm concerned. Although you can download Angry Bunnies for free, so I guess that nullifies any criticism I could give it if I go by my own rules. Yep, I, I got nothing, nothing at all to criticize here. My morbid curiosity just had to see some of the gold that's been under our noses this entire time. Hey, do you remember when Nintendo charged money for Mario Clock on the DSiWare store? And that was one of the good ones too. When looking through the eShop, there was one game in particular that really stuck out to me, the game that was kind of the influence for this entire video. It's the most expensive one in the entire list of games for this video, as well as potentially the most offensive. Fight of Gods, a god-themed fighting game. Okay. Oh boy, when the title screen is preceded with a warning, you know you really hit the jackpot. You see, it says the team has no intention of offending anyone, but if we watch the trailer right after this really dope Jesus reveal, you hype him up by saying he's back and he's cross. <laughs> oh my god. Literally. As for the game itself, I, I don't know man, I'm not much of a fighting game guy, but it does function like one of them. You pick one of your favorite gods and do battle with other gods. How can I say no to my boy Santa here? I'm gonna have him destroying others with his reindeer army. I couldn't not do that. Oh hey, look at that, we got Rudolph up in front too. That's an attention to detail that I can appreciate. Is it a solid fighting game with really good fighting mechanics? No. No, of course not. As a total goof, however, I will admit this has been a fun game to show off to some friends. And in the PC version, unlike the Switch version, there's actually online multiplayer. So if you want to lay the smack down with Mr. Claus with people from all across the globe, cause who hasn't had that thought, here you go. If there was online multiplayer in the Switch version, I may be singing a different tune, but sadly, that's where we are. Oh my god, he's back and he's cross. That is a level of cleverness I didn't think was achievable up until now. Oh my goodness. Now when I read the title Crocs World, oh boy, I gotta tell you, did I ever get excited. This is more like it here, I loved Croc. Absolute PS1 classic. The sequel wasn't half bad either in my opinion. Oh yeah, Croc is back, baby. Oh, that ain't, that ain't the right Croc. I guess calling this garbage wouldn't really be fair because it does work. That's about all I got. This is just the most bare bones 2D platformer you could ever imagine, ripping off Mario like that plumber never existed and coming equipped with a pebble gun, much like real crocodiles do. The levels don't even have finishes, they just stop. There's only one song that plays on loop for the entire game. There are 30 levels of really, really, really basic platforming. No boss battles of any fashion, which to be fair, I guess this game having any form of combat is kind of hilarious. And only 25 minutes after getting past the title screen. All right, look at that. Game finished. Okay. I can't, I can't get back to the menu though, but I keep changing the background. That's kind of weird. Oh, well, there's that. Amazingly enough, there are actually a handful of these games. This is so weird. There are three Crocs World games and we only got to Croc 2 on PS1. That's an insult. Similar to Bouncy Bob, this definitely seems like a prime example of a mobile game being thrown onto the Switch with barely any effort. That's not a practice that's inherently bad. I've played plenty of really basic platformers on the Switch and they can be enjoyable if they're fun. I know, that's a novel concept. But nah, if you got a hankering for a platformer that's crocodile themed, go and stick to the original croc instead. Glad I finally got to say that out loud. Next up, we have Nikki, also known as Nikki the Home Alone Golf Ball. Well, right off the bat, we already see some character customization. This is already looking way better than the last one. Hi Nick, good to see you are finally awake. Now, let's get back to business. Oh. Oh no, I take it all back. No other voice has ever instilled as much terror in no time flat like... Nikki, let me give you some advice. Don't be curious. So on paper, this isn't that terrible of an idea. You use some pseudo standard golf controls in a platformer setting. I actually like that it's trying something new. Our goal is to make our way to a party where all of our friends are at. And naturally, it is a massive adventure to get there. And that quest to get to that party? 
probably gave me the worst anxiety I have felt from a video game in a very, very long time. This gameplay style is so obviously not designed with fast-paced, precision-based platforming in mind, and sure enough, that's what we got. Oh, oh, I remember. Nikki, I remember. And stupid old Microsoft Sam will not shut up and that doesn't do the game any favors. After like 10 minutes of swinging myself around in the house mindlessly, we finally made it over to the roof, one step closer to getting to that party. Next up, we just gotta go across some electrical lines. No big deal. <laughs> Did a golf ball just cause a bird to explode? You absolute maniacs, you can blow up birds in this game. They put them in your path and it's next to impossible to avoid them, so by design, you're supposed to blow them up. How'd you let this happen? Oh man, this part. Okay, so there's a handful of pipes, right? Where only one is the way to progression and the others will send you way back in the level where you have to do really obnoxious platforming all over again and the only way to figure out which pipe is correct is by trial and error. Did I mention this game gave me anxiety? But I can definitely say with enough perseverance, you too can make it to that party. It only took me 576 swings to get there, but I finally did it. Now let's put Nikki in Smash. Now I couldn't possibly pass over this next one. One of the most common suggestions for me to check out was... Piano. Seemed pretty self-explanatory. Oh, finally, a video game console that can teach me how to play piano. Oh yeah, forgot about that thing. Piano comes with a free play mode, so you can anything you wanty. Whoa, anything I wanty? I just want to let you know before we dive into this that normally they charge $10 for this. I really want that information out there real quick. Okay, we're into the game. We got two options here. We can play the piano or we can learn to play the piano. Okay, well, I'm not too good at it, so I may as well learn. Oh man, okay. I didn't know piano on Nintendo Switch had my jams. We got happy birthday to you. London Brig is falling down. Old MacDonald had a fram. Absolute classics. Oh man, and this key layout, this is giving me pain. How, how much does this cost again? Oh, that's right, $10. And yeah, money well spent, I guess. That's it, that, that's the whole $10 piece of software here. You can either play the piano mindlessly or have the game tell you which notes to press in a specific order without a rhythm to it so the songs that you're trying to replicate doesn't sound right anyway. D ah! What is totally bizarre is the company that published this, Sabic, has way more eShop games than I ever could have anticipated. Holy cow. Well, I guess saying games is kind of pushing it, but I digress. There are too many to choose here. I had to go for one more. One more just to please my weird, morbid curiosity. Let's... Let's get Tennis Go. Because in the back of my mind, I would be playing Mario Tennis Aces on the same console and think no. No, 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 I want a bad tennis game. And if you're like me, then boy, this is the title for you. It's tennis. To the game's credit, this is normally $1 less than piano, so for only $9, you get to play singular games of tennis with a handful of different skin options, zero unlockables. That's it. How, how does this company keep pumping these games out and charging so much for them and clearly getting away with it? It's because normally these games are a whole lot cheaper. These are the games that are on sale all the time. So by the time you're watching this, they may not be nine or $10, but even for the $1 you might find them for. Yeah, absolutely not worth it. Sabic, more like these games make me sad. Ick, I got nothing. But if we're talking about Nintendo Switch eShop garbage, we can't forget about the granddaddy of them all, Vroom in the Night Sky, releasing all the way back on March 3rd, 2017 in Japan and Europe. That's right, everybody. This is a launch title. Room in the Night Sky became infamous right out of the gate, and honestly, I avoided it for so long as a result. Everyone said it was bad. Why would I give it a shot when there are so many better options? Now that I've finally given it a shot myself, yeah, yeah, I can see why. It's not good. Fly through the rings. There you go, that's the whole game. It's about as bare bones of a Superman 64 styled game as you could possibly imagine, but the dialogue that pops up every now and then, this is what I'm interested in. Let's see what they have to say here for the deep plot. I'll never lose. What are you saying? Is here a camel there? I have never seen here. Tut. Magical girl is a comfortable job. Did you? 
there is only one tree. That's how it is. And people say this game is bad? I mean, come on, to nobody's surprise, the game is not fun. Absolutely not. Room in the Night Sky isn't fun to play in the slightest, but it also features some of the greatest dialogue I've ever seen in my life, so credit where credit's due. This was kind of worth the money. I've never been fall over. That's how it is. That's how it is. Another title that was released really early on that I thought was pretty dreadful was Woodle Tree Adventures. This is a great jumping noise for a platformer game. There's not even much to talk about here, it is simply a really, really boring and incredibly flawed 3D platformer. Having a more limited art style is fine, I guess. I mean, even having this Fall Guy looking chunk of wood is kinda cute, but fundamentally, this is just... Ooh. Oh, wait, okay, I like this guy. This guy's kinda cute, doing a little dance. Yeah, screw that guy. I'm sorry, sir. Do you have indigestion? Attacking with your leaf doesn't feel good. The platforming and the weight of your character doesn't feel good. This one guy doesn't like being hit, and before I have a chance to grieve with him, something else kills me, and now I'm at the beginning of the stage. Fun. Ah, there's definitely something here, but oh man. <laughs> this ain't it. But to my surprise, there's actually a sequel, Woodle Tree 2 Deluxe. Okay, well, I'm already way too far deep into this rabbit hole. Why wouldn't I try it out? Okay, so there's actual cutscenes in this one. That's kind of cool. They were practically non-existent in the first game, so that's a plus right off the bat. The life has been taken from all of these special trees, so you gotta go save them. Simple enough. Okay, first and foremost, Woodle is a lot chunkier now, so... This sequel is starting off great. Is... Is, is this a proper hub world? We got shops with items to purchase with collectibles. What, what? That wasn't a thing before either. Wow, the game even controls so much better too. All of this platforming we got going on and I'm able to handle it with ease. That's surprising. And this world is genuinely huge and you can explore it at your own pace. What? So as bizarre as this is gonna sound, Woodle 2, unlike the first game, takes a whole lot of inspiration from Zelda Breath of the Wild. Listen, as somebody who spent over $100 on the games for today's video, would I ever lie to you? I may come off as incredibly unstable, but I would never lie to you. You know how in the start of that game you can see the world below you and realize you can go anywhere? Well, artistic parallels do pop up in the most mysterious of places. You're definitely pushed in a main direction for sure, there's these pathways on the ground that constantly tell you where you need to go next, but there are multiple dungeons to explore, with enemies and puzzles to conquer, you can kind of do them in any order you want, and there are collectibles around every corner, and there's no loading screens. This is crazy, how is this the same developer? The disparity between both Woodle games is incredible. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't gonna be a game of the year contender or anything like that, but I actually didn't want to put the controller down when I was playing it. As opposed to the first game where I wanted to chuck my controller through a wall. Look at this, you can get on your little leaf and skate. Good game. And you can also have the little guy hold a flower and wear a mask as a costume. Call me impressed, Woodle. You have redeemed yourself. My main objective with finding all of these bottom of the barrel games was to show off some prime examples of really poor game design as well as expose just how low the bar could potentially be to get some of these games on the Nintendo eShop. Plenty of these games definitely fit the bill, but for the most part, honestly, a lot of the garbage I found can just be summed up in two sentences. So it's time for a lightning round! Splat the fruit. There's this weird looking orange thing. You gotta use the tools at your disposal to get it splatted. It controls terribly with an analog stick. It was clearly meant for a mobile phone and on the TV, it's just the worst. It's just the worst. And the fruit makes terrifying noises. I hate this. Toy stunt bike, tip tops trials. I am totally scared of this thing. You know, Diddy Kong never showed up in Mario Kart 8. Looks like this is the reason why. It's just one of those really simple physics-based biking games, also using that very stock gradient that's been around for like, ever now. So it's kind of okay, I guess. The best part about this is you can ragdoll yourself off the bike whenever you want. Easily the best part of the whole game. Preventative Strike, a shooter with a really bad frame rate where things are coming at you from every single angle with like no way to properly take them down yourself, meaning it is a losing battle every single time, and the game is so loud, oh my god, I can't hear anything. Crypt of the Serpent King, a pretty good idea, I will admit, randomly generated dungeons where you gather keys and take down enemies, pretty cool stuff, but hey, don't get too surprised here when I say this, it controls really poorly. Also by default it's stupid, dark, oh my goodness, I get it, atmosphere and whatnot, but you can barely see what's going on. There you go, now that the brightness is up I can finally see what I'm doing. Oh. 
Goodbye then. Okay, it took long enough, but I finally have all the keys to level one. What is behind the magical locked door? Oh, look at that. A guy. Rest in pieces. The bullet, time of revenge. Just this massive, ridiculous cluster of a third person shooter that uses stock assets from the Unity engine, an asset flip as it's called. That is pretty damn shameless if you ask me. Pizza parking, a park the car simulator. I guess not the worst thing in the world, all things considered, it controls decently. And there's also multiple vehicles, so the variety is definitely there. Is that, is that, is that what I think it is? You, you put, you put in the Final Fantasy jingle. I don't know if that's legal. And the culmination of all of my travels came with one hell of a grand finale. And I know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but sometimes you can't help it. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Pooplers. I am not coming out of this the same man as I was when I went into it, am I? Listen, let's be honest here. If this comes across your screen when you're searching for games to buy, you gotta have some form of curiosity here, no matter how morbid it may be. Let's see how they try to sell the game here. There is a trailer to check out. Rated M, blood, crude humor, and violence. What? 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 The listing says E10, but the trailer says M. H how? How? How did that happen? Okay, yeah, now I have to play it. Oh yeah, absolutely. First things first, we gotta keep the fart volume at max. I am here for the full Poopler's experience. Don't you forget it. Oh, finally! Baby customization. Exactly what I wanted to see. A, a make games great again hat. Oh, oh my fight of gods. You know, I guess I'll give the developers credit. There are a lot of options on hand and a few different arenas to play in. That's kind of, that's kind of cool. They really wanted to give this game a lot of replay value. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, I couldn't say that with a straight face. I can't wait to, uh, I guess, see what this game is like. This is taking a shockingly long amount of time to load, though. You know, I know some Switch games have some loading issues, but I figured this would at the very least... Oh, no. Okay, so the objective is much like Splatoon. Keep pooping your own color around the floor, and whichever one of you has the most amount of poop coverage wins. It is exactly like Splatoon. Now you may think it's an issue that all of this poop comes in different colors. Yes. One word of advice though, you gotta avoid the mother, absolutely. She is not too happy about what's going on. Oh no, not about all the poop, that's fine. It's the babies being out of their crib. Don't be foolish, that is the thing we gotta stop. Stop it. I guess if the babies are in their crib, then they can't poop, right? I, I, that's how that's how babies work? Oh, oh, uh-oh, we got an item here. Full speed poop and let's go! Gotta shoot for number one, am I right? Oh and yeah, and when you grab the meat, you do double, double size poops. I mean, I guess, I guess that makes sense. After what feels like an eternity, my baby, as expected, reigns supreme. Wouldn't have had it any other way. I am the champion of pooplers. Just another word of advice. Don't look into the mouth of the baby for too long. It's a portal to an alternate universe. Pooplers. And people say there's no more original ideas in the world of gaming. All right, I did it. I talked about a whole slew of bad games in one video for the internet. I finally did the thing. I finally did the YouTuber gamer thing. Do I... Do I get a prize? I'm sorry, I see you're starting a new game of pooplers. I am gonna beg you to not do that. I am gonna cry.